Good afternoon, everybody. Kamari Ellis here, the Finance Rebel. You're watching the Finance Rebel Show. Welcome to today's conversation. You know, every Saturday, I like to do wealthy conversations. And so I go out in the universe, usually the cyberverse, the socialverse, and I try to find somebody who has a business, who's active, who's doing things out there in the community, and people that I find interesting. And so this week, I wanted to talk to a buddy of mine. Her name is Kelly Thomas, and she is the owner of Kelly's Closet. She owns Kelly's Closet, which is a lingerie store geared towards plus size women. And so I find this story very interesting because usually plus size ladies usually get pushed to the side. They get shown no respect. They get shown no love. And so I said, you know what? Let's have Kelly come on and have a conversation about plus size woman and her business. So without further ado, everybody say hello to Kelly's Closet. How you doing, Kelly? Good morning. How's everybody? Well, good afternoon at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and I just realized I, I used your company as your actual name. But this, we're talking to Kelly Thomas. The owner <laughs> but I guess we are our businesses, right? You know? We are. We are. So tell everybody a little bit about what you do, Kelly. Okay, sure. So I own, like you said, Kelly's Closet. It's an online lingerie store catering to plus size ladies. Um, and really, it's just a movement of bringing you back into your confidence and making sure that you can feel sexy at any size. Um, that is what we stand for. So we, we're we here. Hey. Now, why, <laughs> why, why is it important for plus size women to feel sexy and confident, no matter their size? Well, you know, for so long, we are excluded from campaigns. We are excluded from large box retailers. So it's important that we are able to, one, show our personality, two, show our shapes because they are lit. And (laughs) (laughs) And not even that, seeing a physical representation of yourself makes you feel, you know, confident that you can wear it too. Whether it's a suit of, you know, pants, bathing suit, lingerie, whatever it is, you know, wanting to be represented in a brand. Right, right. So what what inspired you to do this? So the inspiration for me came um, one Valentine's Day. So I've been in business about almost seven years. Um, or it is seven years. Seven years. <laughs> um, yeah, so seven years this year. It was back in February. Um Thank you. But so the it came from my fiance went and bought me lingerie. Now he went to one of the big box stores a thousand years ago. I had, you know, sized out of Victoria's Secret. Eh, not a surprise. Most of us have. And you know, even when they had larger sizes or extra large, it was like five items. Either way. <laughs> Still go into the uh, big box stores that are supposed to be for plus size women. There were only about two to three options available. Gotcha. Now <laughs> Now, I and none of them fit well. So what he bought was a great grand gesture, but I took it home. You know, when he got he gave it to me, got it home, unboxed it, went to go put it on, and was like, "Uh, this is what they have for us. This, this is it." He was what? like, "It was either this one or that one," and I, I got both. So if it fit like that, then the other one probably, you know, is just as bad. And I'm like, "Oh, great." there has to be a different way. I mean, it deflated your confidence because here I am ready to put on and, and you know, for my fiance and have him enjoy in the moment the same way I can. But now I put on something that put me in a horrible mood and put my mind frame, you know, my mind in a different frame where right. I couldn't, you know, visualize putting this on, feeling confident and being sexy for him at the same time. It just didn't all come together. So I was like, it can't be just me who has this feeling. So, I mean, and I'm I not even. Ask, I gotta ask him because because I know you, right? So, yeah. what was your response at the moment? Was it like, "What the f is this?" Or like, no, no. I mean, it was like I was like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "All right, all right." I'm a I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on. So I get in there and I get to putting it on, and you know, I don't know. All right, so come on, you ever put on a shirt and you get stuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> you know, it's one of them kind of experiences. It's like. Damn, they said it was my size, and then I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me like I don't know what to say. And I'm like, I, 
nothing. Just, you know, just sit it over there. You get, you know, do whatever you need to do with it. We just put it in a drawer or something. Maybe I lose 15, 20 pounds one day and I can wear it. I, like, I don't know what to tell you. But, <laughs> but it didn't make the experience what he expected it to be. And it was a horrible, you know, experience for me. Okay. So, so yeah. So, I mean, you know, sometimes you be all down. It sets the mood. You're ready to go. Everything is right. Dinner, light, champagne, food. Everything is great. And then you get this lingerie and it's like, damn, mood killer. Immediately. What do we do for the next few hours? Right, right, right. You know, okay. when this was the tone. So, yeah. So, I figured it couldn't just be me. It had to be other people. So, I started doing research. Okay. Okay. So, I just want to show something real quick. Right. So, you're just not the average, you know, lingerie with the teddy and the cover up. Your no. Stuff, your stuff is, uh, it's got some personality. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, <laughs> if, if, one if of I, my, I could, you know, if I could put it nicely, right? <laughs> and I, I mean, <laughs> y'all, I, I need y'all to be gentle with me today, right? I'm a dude, right? <laughs> and, you know, I tell Kelly all the time, like, I can't look at her page, her Facebook page. She's got over 281,000 followers. Like, Kelly's out here killing it. But when you look at this page, like, you got all kinds look of... Look at all of that curvy goodness. I am saying. Yeah, and listen, <laughs> it, it, it is goodness, but, you know, I'm old and married, so, like, <laughs> I'm really looking at this kind of stuff. You know? No, you are supposed to be looking at this kind of stuff. You are married. You're not blind. The uh, goal is to envision your spouse, your loved one, your lover, your interest, whoever. Not your interest. Not not for you. This is in general. Your interest I, I can't in these interest. pieces. We, no, we, no, you can't have an interest. I have a um, okay. <laughs> I Black mean, love. but it is. Black love's important. It is, yeah, you know what I mean? Black love is important. Like, let's, let's keep that in mind that the goal is to, oh, a story that represents my wife, a story that represents my spouse, my girl, my lady, whoever. And they have her size and it's sexy. It's not boring. It's, it's, I want to see her in this. You know what I mean? And it's going to make her feel good because it fits. Gotcha. So I see you have all different kind of ladies, dark, light, white, Latino, black, um, and they're all plus size. Yeah. I have no idea where plus size starts, right? Because I'm black. So a lot of us, <laughs> you know, butt thighs, hips, tits, you know, it all runs the gamut in our community. And so a lot of times what mainstream America or what mainstream so-called mainstream beauty is doesn't, well, they didn't always cater to that. It seems like they're starting to tip their toe into that now, but can you tell me what plus size is? So plus size is is relative, depending on who you ask. So if you ask those desi designers who you're talking about, they may say a plus size model for them is a six. They a may six. say a plus size, yeah. All right, they so, may say, what? So just, just, just to get reverence, years ago I worked at the Gap. So mm -hmm. I have a good idea what sizes are. Loosely. I'm a, I'm a little rusty, but a six, that's I mean, unless you're like five foot, that's not very. I mean, even at five foot, that ain't that ain't nothing. So, like, know, let's keep just to put it in perspective. Let's let's put it in perspective, okay? So, sizes for women go in even numbers from zero up to like fifty, right? Um, six. <laughs> yeah. Zero, two, four, six. Yeah. That's, uh... So they would use a size six model and call that plus size. That gives a real plus size woman for me is probably a 16, 14, 16 kind of teetering on that one um, would be the beginning of plus size. And that person's body shape is going to be completely different from somebody who's a size six. Right. I mean, not just, you know, in weight, size, height, shape, all of those different things. You have women who are bottom heavy, women who are just top heavy. You have people who have, you know, small waist, bigger butts, bigger hips and ass. So, you know, you have all of these different shapes. And it's just say a size six flat out straight up and down is who they use as their example isn't sufficient. It's not right. It's not even fair. So, I mean, but is that the start? Is, is six to start or is it higher than that? So for models per se, it might be a six. 
right? Uh, everyday people, though. From everyday people, I think it depends on who you ask. So if you're a model, everyday people, some there are people who are models. So for them, they could go out for the same model casting that a size 16 could go. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you're going. Now, if you're talking about like your big box stores, where do they draw the line at? Usually a size 14. Oh, okay. Okay. But keep in mind that they're going to sell you a size 14, but they're going to show it to you on a size 6 or a 10. Mm, got you. See the when issue? They're when they're advertising it, they're going to show it in a, in a size 6 or 10. Yep. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. That's 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 kind of crazy. Um, that's a big wide chasm there. Mm -hmm. All right, so your husband got you some sexy lingerie that wasn't so sexy because you couldn't get into it. I'm and, saying. <laughs> so you were then inspired to create Kelly's Closet, and so did did it. And we're seven years in. So did Kelly's Closet start here? Or did how did it initially start? Um, so it initially started with just an idea um, and research. I mean, I think you go into any business knowing what your market is, knowing what you're doing, what you're capable or what you think you're capable of bringing to the market. What's your new aspect? What's your twist on it? Um, and being able to market something different. So what I wanted to bring that I didn't see were bodies that look like mine. Mm. So I was used to being served models who were a size six or a size 10. And I didn't want that to be my brand because that's not who, who I am. I My body is not the same shape as a size six or a 10. It just ain't. I, I'm, I'm bigger. I'm plus size, real plus size. I'm so I need a model who, you know, represents my shape. Also, I'm not really hippie. I don't have a big butt. So, you know, you're going to have models who, who are pear shaped. I mean, not pear shaped, but, you know shape different maybe you know a little bit more boxy than than coke bottle i, I want to feel represented in lingerie too and know that that piece can complement my body as well so right. that was one thing that i wanted to make sure that i brought to the market not just that it was lingerie um for plus size women because let's be clear i do sell regular sizes too and the other thing that i make sure of is that my pieces are consistent so they look the same from a small all the way up to a 4x so I'm selling the same thing to small girls that I'm selling to big girls. So if I could do it, it proves to you that it could have been done all along. It just wasn't being done. We were the continued afterthought of the industry. Gotcha. 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 I mean, do you think that'll change anytime soon? Um, I think it depends on the industry. Well, you're in the industry, so that's... I mean, well, I think... Well, all right. So for me, yes, it changes. But do I think... I mean, am I a big box store? Not yet. Do I hope to be? Of course. Do I don't want to have physical locations. Believe me, I'm fine being online. But <laughs> do, <laughs> do I want to see more plus size women represented by more than like three or four brands? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's moving to that point when they realize how much money we actually spend on clothes. Right. Just to put it in comparison, um, Smaller women with smaller chests can go to the store and buy a bra, let's say, for $10, $15, $20, $25. $20. When we buy lingerie and bras and panties and stuff, they cost upwards of $60, $80, and $100. Mm. And we're talking about for a regular everyday bra. Right, right. To make sure that we are, you know, we have the quality product and something that doesn't have to be replaced every month. Mm. So we are willing to spend more. Because we realize that there's quality in us spending more. Gotcha. So there isn't a reason for an industry not to cater to us exclusively other than the fact that they don't respect our money. And then that just goes to it's the same thing with every issue in consumerism. Spend your money with people who want your money and who represent you. You know, it's funny you talk about the, the price of bras. Um, I literally just had a conversation with a friend of mine who just had a breast reduction. Mm -hmm. And she said, it was killing my back and I was tired of $60 bras. And, you know, I'm a dude. Again, I'm a dude, right? I ain't thinking about no $60 bra. But then to hear that, I'm just like, wow. Because I'm sure that, I'm sure you're not going to wear the same bra every day, right? You're going to need, I mean, two bras, right? That's a buck 20 right No, there. I mean, right. That's the buck 20. So yeah. imagine... You talking about every day and then think about what your different style of shirt are. 
your button up, your turtleneck, your your low cut, your back out, your stomach. Like, you know what I mean? Like, think of all the different things you would need a bra for right. when you have to wear one. Like, not wearing one is not an option. So, <laughs> so you are, you know, spending all of this money and companies still don't give you the quality that you want. They still don't represent you in their campaigns. So what do you do? You shop with people who do. Right. So basically you said, I don't see any representation here. So I'm going to buy, I'm going to create something for me by me. That's right. Okay. So seven years in, what has your biggest challenge been? But let me, let me rephrase that question. If you could, if you could know, what would you have liked to have known and thoroughly understood at the very beginning, if you could change it now? Ha ha. Ha. Um, <laughs> a lot, Kamari, a lot. Um, there's aspects of business that you'll never know. Um, going into it, right. I mean, no, no, no business. How, all right, let me figure out how to say this. No amount of school, and let me just put that out there. So, I have a bachelor's in business information systems with the emphasis in computer programming and web design, and then a master's in business education. Let me put that out there first, okay? So no amount of classes that I've taken could have prepared me to run my own business. It didn't help you at all? Um, It helped me a tad. But things change so frequently that unless you are living in a real world experience, it didn't really help. It gave me an understanding of terms but not the information. So yes, I, I could understand how to write a marketing plan that I know how to execute it properly. Absolutely not. Right. right. I knew how to write a business plan, but after I did it, did I know how to really put it in place? Absolutely not. <laughs> did I know how to build the website? Yeah, I did. Did I know anything about social media? Absolutely not. So what did you do? <laughs> so, I mean, again, you have, I mean, let's look at this real quick. Because you said business didn't prepare you for this. Right? It didn't prepare me for everything. What I'm saying is there was always more to learn. So it may have given me basic terminology so I could have a decent halfway conversation about it, but mm -hmm. not enough to where I didn't need to look for a team. Not but enough where I didn't to, need to reach out you got to people who were better. Followers on social, I mean, on Instagram. I said I've been in business for seven years. You thought I was you, in business not to grow? You <laughs> lit. You lit. And if y'all look right there, you can see like that that little that little thingy right there, the finance rubble on one of her followers. But like I said, I can't be on her page too long. It's a little too, <laughs> it's a little too <laughs> All right, so didn't learn this stuff in school seven years in and you learned. I mean I hear so many people that want to get in business, but a lot of times they really don't want to learn. They really don't want to research. What were you researching? What were you studying? Who were you hiring? Who was helping you to get to this place? Okay. So I have my research. Okay. So research was on brands, development, sizes, cost, um, product availability, specs, things like that. Um, and then also it was on, um, consumer behavior. So what time of year are people more likely to buy lingerie in your marketing tactics and things like that. So kind of researching every little bit and going one by one, but I could only understand or digest a certain portion of it. You know what I mean? Before I had to reach out and be like, okay, so I read this, Kelly, go look for somebody to actually write you a, a social media strategy so that you know what to do going forward. What do you need to do? Um, are you just posting, hoping people hit your website? I mean, that's not really a way to run a business <laughs> and it doesn't really help you build, but what do you, you know, get from learning that, you know, who can help you move that past there? Um, what website and what platform is the best to host your website? It's a thousand of them out there. How can you know which one is the best? Right. Right. Um, and everybody has an opinion depending on who they are. So a web designer may say, Hey, go and look at WordPress. And you're like, okay. Somebody else who's had a business might say, look at Shopify. Well, you go to Shopify and they got five or six different plans to choose from. Then you have other, you know, competitors with Shopify who do the same thing. So, you know, trying to figure out who is right and who is wrong. Um, 
and then trying to make a, a overall aesthetic for your brand. So how do you want to look or be presented to your audience? Um, there were certain features that I wanted on my website that maybe I had saw on a different website that I knew I could only get from here or that I had to go in and try to code or I have to pay somebody to go in and code. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, you know, the specifics. You get an overall, like, like I know I need a website. I know I can put the products on a website, but when I want them to do X, Y, and Z, now I'm out of my lane. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? So, and, you know, you are under the misconception. I think school gives you the conception sometimes that if you build it, they will come. Ha. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't happen either. We all know that false. <laughs> that ain't happen either. Let Man. me tell you. So, I sat on there for maybe a year, sat on my business for maybe a year after building a website and nobody came. Hmm. No, I get it. I get it. I, I mean, a lot of people definitely think if you build it, they will come. That is one of the big, biggest misconceptions ever. Um, and it's probably one of the biggest, um, I guess, blocks from people ever becoming successful because many people get the, the what if syndrome. What, mm -hmm. if breaks? what if that shuts down? How do you do this? What if I don't have enough money? And all of those things are real things. But like you said, you're never going to be able to try to figure out and put that brain to work if you're not actually faced with the obstacle. So uh, it's one theory is one thing. And theory is good, you know, it's cool. But application or actual execution is something totally different. Now, I asked you a question um, a minute ago that we kind of didn't really dive down into. I said, why don't you do any of the kind of regular stuff? Because everything, um, you know, on your page is showing, showing skin, right? You don't have like the cover teddies or anything like that. You want to. I don't know if this is the right way we don't want to use it. You want to be a bit more provocative. Is that strategic or do you just so, not like the conservative lingerie? Okay. So, Kamari, when I see those pieces, they remind me of my grandmother's lingerie. <laughs> I only want to give you my honest opinion. I mean, I'm not old. Um, <laughs> I'm relatively young. So, when I see something that reminds me of something that my mother or grandmother will wear, it's definitely not something I want. Now, if that was my audience, I'd add it. But I mean, I guess that was that was gonna be my next question. Is that your audience, right? Absolutely like, not. So did were you were you strategic about about this? About not having the what you call the grandma lingerie. <laughs> um <laughs> absolutely I was strategic about that. <laughs> I mean, you can buy a satin slip and I wish you put a picture up right now. A I, satin I, I, slip I, 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 I and robe anywhere. I mean, you can literally buy that at, you know, anywhere. Anywhere. Yo, polyester, I sleep in this nightgown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, not me. Can you see that? I can. That's horrible. Well, that, that was one of the pictures we could so. Again, everybody, me and Kelly are friends. We talk. Um, and I, because she's going through a problem. Kelly, I don't know if we can talk about that or not. I would love to. But um, you want to talk about it? I, I'm here. I'm here to talk about it. Let's okay. Go. So, the, the, just to give everybody a little bit more backstory, right? So, Kelly's having a problem with running ads on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And everybody who's in a similar line of business um, gets their ads approved by Facebook. Facebook is telling her that her stuff needs to be, it's showing too much TNA or too much skin, right? So I said, well, put up something like this, right? No, be specific. They told me that I was selling sex. Okay, but isn't lingerie selling sex? I mean, no, lingerie is selling lingerie. It's just like bathing suit. They say the same thing about bathing suits that I do ads for. So well, I guess I'm, a, I'm a man, right? So I think when men see lingerie, they think sex automatically i mean that's just me that that's just me and i do but you know what to be fair to you to what you just said i do i do know ladies who will walk around privately in their homes with lingerie on and it's not for anything it's not for anybody any particular lover or interest or 
husband or spouse or anything like that. But you said you hate this this thing right here, and it's not yeah. it's not your style. It's not your. Uh, and we're going to come back to to the Facebook thing, everybody. I just want to put a period on this. It's not your style, um, and it doesn't appeal to you at all. And as you just said, you feel like it's for grandma, right? But yeah. then, but then when we look at when we look at your page, it shows it's, it ain't for grandmas, right? <laughs> it ain't for grandmas, right? It's lit. <laughs> it looks like you know again plus size woman that I'm 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 gonna say this right, but correct me if I'm wrong. That you okay. might be performing at a club somewhere, right? Or absolutely not. No. No. This is very revealing. No, no. There is a clear difference between. So, Kamari, let's school you real quick, okay? School so that is the equi- that is the equivalent. Okay, remember, so first of all, lingerie. And remember, I as a dude, right? So I, I think as a dude thinks. I know you think as a dude thinks. So let me tell you this: there is a clear difference in what dancewear is, okay, than what lingerie is. And so the dancewear folks never wear the kind of lingerie that you have. No. Okay. All right. School me. Keep school. It's me. not conducive to it. So let me. So just. Real quick. So dancewear kind of has a thicker material, although it can be sheer and usually is sheer comes off. Um, but it stays in place. My lingerie is designed to kind of move with your body. If, if that makes sense. So there's, I mean, there's moves with your body, but it stays in place. And when I say stays in place, I mean like mine's might be crotchless. If you go to a strip club, they aren't really dancing in anything crotchless. They technically shouldn't be, but I, yeah. So um, <laughs> so that's not it. They wouldn't really be dancing in a baby doll, more of a bra and a panty, more of a one piece, more in a skirt, something that can tear away easily. Mines are not. Right. So, yes, it is lingerie, but it is not dancewear. There's a difference. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that clarification. And I am I am the and I am the uneducated consumer. <laughs> so listen, I asked you all those questions, right? Um, there's a point to it all, right? You are really reflecting your personality and your business. You're re- really reflecting what you believe is sexy in your business, and clearly that's subjective. I but mean, I know, well, I I what? sell things I don't like. But you might sell things you don't like, but they won't be like grandma stuff. No, it won't right. be grandma stuff. Right. So, but that's a clear business decision. I know a lot of people who feel like. When they get in the business, they have to be one way, almost like corporate to a certain degree, right? You got to fit this mold. You got to do this thing. You have to, you have to conform to a certain standard and and totally ignore what your taste and what your preference is. And it seems like that's not what you did. You totally rebelled and you said, I'm going to oh, do what Kelly does. Absolutely. I mean, look, we've, we already were put into a box. So the idea here is to get out of that box. We were told, no, you a big girl. Wear this gown down to your ankles. Oh, you a big girl. Put on this muumuu over here. Oh, you a big girl. We don't want you to have matching bra and panty sets. Tan, black, and white is good for you. Colors, mm mm-mm. You just need black and red, and you only really need it on Valentine's Day. You don't have no anniversaries. It's not possible for you to be in a relationship. We want you to wear these three colors. We want you to do it on these specific dates, and that's it. I'm here to say, uh uh-uh, we are going to be sexy every day. We are going to be sexy regardless of size, and we're going to let our confidence shine through. So I think the entire idea was to break what is, what's been traditionally shown. It it, it gotta be. You can't stay the same. That's, That's not it. You can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. Okay. All right. Okay. So going back to the Facebook issue, right? So you you tried everything known to man, right? You tried different ads. You tried mannequins with just the stuff on it, which I don't even know why anybody would do that because it shows no personality. Um, it shows no style, shows no flair. It ain't got no swag, but I get it. So what's your next thought? And did I rep- did I describe your issue properly? Um, 
I, I say that again, Kamar. You said my issue was that I used. Right. Well, I'm asking, did I describe it properly? I just want to make sure I'm giving the audience the proper description. Um. Okay. So, yeah, you you gave them the basic overall description. Um. Uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure it was clear. If it wasn't, yes, Facebook ads are telling me that I sell sex and that not my lingerie is too revealing. Um. Well, yeah. Basically, that I sell sex and that, you know, I can't sell sex on Facebook, but I'm not selling sex. So I'm selling lingerie. The funny part is, is that I get served the same ads from other lingerie brands <laughs> who happen to use skinny models. <laughs> and I am stuck, you know, at an impasse with what do you do? What do you try to do to expand? Um and figuring out what works for my brand and still truly represents my brand, who I am, our core beliefs, and being able to move forward outside of the realm of Facebook or Google, hell, Pinterest, anybody who is controlling what the ads, you know, represent or what Kelly's Closet represents. Right, right. So, yeah, no, I think you represented it clearly. I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a block on plus curvy bodies. Um We'll see. I mean, what ways have you thought about getting around this? Because I know you have aspirations of making Kelly's closets bigger than Victoria's Secrets. Um, I'm working on it, Kamari. I mean, so far we have, we are launching our brand ambassador program. Um, I did a search for over 100 brand ambassadors. I just did our first meeting. I have a few exciting things coming out next month. Um, that'll hopefully push the brand a little bit further, but you know, it still seems like it's going to have to be word of mouth. So for now, until we can figure out a workaround, it's not that, you know, the money isn't there to use to, you know, come up with with a workaround, but hell, if I can't take it through Facebook and make, take it through social media, I can take it straight to the people and have my girls out there representing for Kelly's closet at every event and every on the internet and on social media and everywhere else. It's not necessarily black and post, just a paid ad. I can't believe don't nobody want my money. <laughs> <laughs> like, the first time I heard that, like, no, keep your money, sis. We don't even want it. No, you can't run no ads here. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a little crazy, um, especially in the era that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you got the Facebook thing going on, you got your business going on, and you're a full time mom. How do you I juggle know. these things? There's no such thing as juggle, Kamari. What's that? There's no such thing as juggle. Anybody who, who says so is a lie. <laughs> well, how do you <laughs> handle all these things? I, you know, at, you take it at a time. Sometimes I sit at my laptop with my baby on my back. I mean, you know, on my lap. I sit down and work on my website and right now homeschool. You know, it's, I mean, it's a juggle. Before, before this, you were just, you were nursing. And you was like, we got to wait because I got to finish this. Yeah. And this is more important than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all my children are nurse, so I, I totally get it. I totally get it. If you want a problem, don't feed a baby. It ain't going down. <laughs> Man, look. I mean, it, it is what it is. Sometimes it's late nights, early mornings. Sometimes it's team no sleep. Sometimes it's team crash. You just, you you roll with the punches. I mean, luckily my business is online. So while, yes, I'm available, um, I'm not tied to it 24 hours a day. So there are, you know, gaps and hours where I can get up and go do everything. I'm not updating my website every day. Like, let's, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> you know, you and create you know a what? schedule and try to keep yourself consistent. And you know what? So I don't want to be the typical misogynistic type dude, right? That ask women the questions that they don't ask men. Like, you know, you're a mom. How do you handle it all? But I am generally fascinated because it's a lot of work. Right. You know, I'm wondering, how do you stay motivated um, through all of this? Because remember the conversation we had, I'm not going to share the conversation we had um, when you were having your newborn. I was like, yo, that's going to be crazy. (laughs) And he was like, I got this. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, look, black women are magic. Kamari, I don't know what to tell you. Black women are magic. (laughs) 
Somebody type that in the chat. Black women. Are the- <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> so, I mean, but do you do anything to keep yourself motivated, to keep yourself up, to keep yourself uh, up in the mood? I mean, because you got a lot. Uh, yeah, I got a lot. Um, I mean, my kids are my motivation. I definitely want them to see something different. Um, I'm the only person around them that, you know, who's around them every day who owns a business. They get my 11 year old gets super excited about it. So he's excited when he gets to help me with packages. He is excited when he, you know, big packages come in the mail and it's, you know, new lingerie and I'm all excited about it. And he's like, what you got, mommy? So, <laughs> so it's fun to, you know, tell him about that. And then it's fun to overhear him when he's playing games with his friend. Like, no, my mom owns her own business. And I'm like, all right. All right. And then, you know, like I said, I have a 22 year old, too. So it's fun to see him also grow into wanting to have his own business um, now that he's almost finished college. So those are the things that I was able to give back. So those things keep me motivated because, hell, if I quit, then they would. Mm-hmm. So you felt you feel like you're carrying all that on your back? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you put anything, you I mean, if you got kids, you carrying it on your back. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, nah, I feel you. I feel you. I so mean, it's, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I was saying it's the same thing with people who are, you know, college graduates, and their thing is they want their kids to go to college too. You put that on your back, making sure they did good all through elementary school, good all through high school, and made it through college. So right. it's the same thing with owning a business. I want my kids to, even if they decide to go to college and they decide to work for somebody else, whether they decide to not go to college and start a business, I want them to know that it's possible. It's it's really possible and it's possible to do when you ain't got no money in your pocket. Gotcha. Gotcha. So here's a question for you. And it's sure. always been an argument. What do you think is more important? The quality of your product or the quality of your marketing? The quality of the product or the quality of the market? The marketing of your business. The marketing. Yes. What's the most important? In your opinion, yes. Ooh. I think they're equally important, Kamari. Okay. They would be equally important for me. Uh, maybe somebody else might see it in a different way. Um, one, I think that we've been served lackluster products in general for way too long. So making sure that I put forth a quality product with my name on it is important or with my name behind it. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that I can stand on it. I don't want to sell you nothing that's going to fall apart in two days. I ain't that person. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that brand. Um, And then marketing. Hell, I want to be represented the same way. I wanted to see myself represented by brands who left me out is the same way I want to make sure that other people see themselves represented in my brand. So those things are both important to me. Um, and I think they're both important to consumers too. Consumers want to feel themselves represented. That's why people like to know the people who they buy from. Right. You know what I mean? That's why they're people buy into people and then buy into a product from that person. You know what I mean? But if that person put forth a lackluster product, then you don't have a customer for life. You got a customer one time. I want you for life. Stick with me. We'll ride it out. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> I, I mean, I feel you, and I I just see so many people that um, will say it's okay to have an okay product, but have great marketing because you can kind of make it up with you know the margins. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of people with just the okay product, right? And hellified marketing, right? I mean, McDonald's is a great example of that. Very true. My one-year-old knows what McDonald's is, and he can't look. Look, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, it's like, <laughs> amazing, amazing. But um, yeah. I mean, a subpar product. But I ain't gonna lie. I still like going to McDonald's though. My fries are really good. So are my apple pies. So <laughs> I think it's subjective. Does it? Is it? Does it fit the bill for the price? I didn't go to McDonald's to expect a steak. <laughs> now I get you, but you know, again, it's, it's again, like a, a I wouldn't say it's a subpar product, right? It's, it's reliable. You know what you want to get and you get it 
basically the same thing every time you go there. But it's not, it's not, you know, grass fed ham massage, Kobe beef at a, a premier steakhouse somewhere. I mean, you ain't paying for that either. So you got to be aware that mu- that it costs. If you want that kind of quality from that product, and you already know you're going to the wrong location. Right, but no, I guess my point my point of it all is this is I get what you say, Emma. It's always a recurring question, right? Do we need excellent quality? Do we need excellent marketing? Do we need neither? Right. Um, because sometimes I'm often you- amazed, I'm often amazed by the marketplace where the product is is lackluster at best and it has great marketing and there's a bunch of disappointed people and people still buy it. So I'm always like, I'm always curious about that. And so, so, okay. So here goes the answer, right? So of course you need great marketing and you need great marketing because without great marketing, nobody would know that your product sucks because nobody would buy it. Right. And you know what they, right. You could have the best product in the world. And no, if there's no and marketing behind it, nobody will know what it is. You got it. But when we look at a lot of businesses, they don't invest any time in marketing either. So again, it's like this, this revolving wheel that kind of goes round and round, and oh, you know, I'm always interested on people's take on that. Yeah, I think you get to a point where you have to market. If you've been lucky enough to make it without marketing this thus far, then you come to a point where you're ready to grow bigger, and you need to spend the money on marketing. But it just depends on where that person wants to see their business. Right, and it, and there's so many ways to market. Everything in marketing doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Um, oh yeah. You definitely can be creative with it, um, but it's going to cost you either time or money. And so you got to figure out which one, <laughs> which one you're willing to part with to get what you need. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, listen, everybody, if you are just now joining us, you're watching the Finance Rebel Show. I am Kamari, also the Finance Rebel. Today is Saturday, and every Saturday, and then we have a wealthy conversation. Today's guest is Miss Kelly Thomas, the founder and operator and CEO of Kelly's Closet, Kelly's Closet, where she provides plus size model sexy lingerie. So there seems like, again, there's still a lot of body shaming um, going around in the world. Do you ever talk to your ambassadors or your customers about that? Or do they rather, do they share their, their, um, thoughts and comments and concerns with you about that and what are some of them um luckily my pay the audience you know for my followers and my my customers are very body positive where they are open to and wanting to see different body sizes and like i said them represented in lingerie and in the marketing for the brand um as far as things I, I've never known what that term means. I, I think it means different things to different people. Okay. So, you know, on one hand, you could say body positive is being comfortable with your body um, and learning to love yourself first, right? And then on the other side, you could say it is being comfortable with other people's bodies and learning to mind your business. <laughs> so don't be kidding. <laughs> don't be kidding. So, <laughs> so it is, you know, it's, it's up for interpretation. It depends on who you ask. I say one is acceptance. Learning, sorry, let me fuck my phone up. Um, it is learning how to love and accept your body. Sorry. All right. Learning to love and accept your body and everything about you um, and, and being comfortable with you, whether you're a size six or a size 50. Now, there are people who I've seen who are a size 10 and it's like, oh, I'm body positive. I have this one little roll in this teeny weeny stretch mark and here I go. And it's like, says, it's probably not it. That's <laughs> It probably didn't mean you, but that would be, that's, that's me putting that inflection on that person. That person may not be happy with the way they look. Right. You know what I mean? So it is really about how you feel about yourself and telling me to mind my business. It ain't got nothing to do with me. If that person say they uncomfortable being a size six with one stretch mark, 
that is their business. They got to fix that. And I should mind my business to tell them who am I to tell them that they shouldn't feel uncomfortable with it or they're perfectly fine if they feel uncomfortable with it. So I think it's, you know, it's all up for interpretation. Right. Because, I mean, I guess we see even with the smaller sizes, a lot of eating disorders. Um, you do. I mean, you might see that throughout the whole spectrum. I'm not sure, but I know they focus a lot of time. I'm pretty sure it's all around. It's just highlighted. Like, it, right. it's, hey, look, it's the same thing with a lot of things. Does it affect everybody? Yes, but we choose this one group to stare at them and make an example out of them. Right. So we right. choose to try to make people think that only skinny people can be anorexic. Is that true? Probably not. Right. <laughs> but it makes sense if I say that, right? Oh, okay. No. And then on the other side, it's like, mind your business. If that person is unhappy, they unhappy. Right. They could be unhappy at 110 pounds or unhappy at 250. They unhappy. Gotcha. 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 So, you know, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's next for what's next for Kelly's closet? Um, what's next for Kelly's closet is we are going to launch our brand ambassador program. I have a special surprise coming out towards the middle of this month. Actually, two big surprises coming out towards the middle of this month, Kamari. I've um, seen you supposed to announce that here. I was supposed to announce that here. What? Which one was I announcing? All of it. I want all the scoop. Jeez. You want all the scoop? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So, first part is Kelly's closet. Y'all, all right. Oh man, we have created our first custom piece. So wait a minute, you like designed it and I did. Did you sew it and stitch it and all that too? I mean, I have paid somebody else to do it. I ain't no damn seamstress, but it, <laughs> <laughs> it got done. Right. Okay. So, so we are, you know, creating our first our first piece that'll be out later on this month. And then we are also going to start with our own forum to have Chats with the ladies or anybody else who'd like to join in called Closet Conversations. Um, oh, where we can, huh? You're going to do that. I am going to do it. Like I am. Really, really, really going to do it. I'm really going to do it, Kamari. I done said it on here. Now I got to do it. I don't have no choice. Other than I'm a liar. I don't lie. So. I got it on record now. <laughs> you got it on record. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, what do y'all want to talk about? What do y'all want to talk about on Closet Conversations? So on closet people, conversations, people, people anything is up for debate. It no, I'm not keep it in the closet. I mean, I want to talk about family, business, life, being a woman, being a mom, all of those great things. Finances, we can talk about anything. I mean, it's definitely a conversation. There are conversations that we just don't have. Um, we don't have them with our family, we don't have them with our friends. And it's time that we pull them those things out the closet, just like we pulled the lingerie out the closet. But you know. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Girl, there's stuff in the closet that people people gonna be coming out with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind, Kamari. It's up to them if they come out with it. But, but I'm down. Get all those skeletons out. All the skeletons out of the closet. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so where is that gonna be at? Where's it gonna air? Sounds like you're hiding on your car. I know I'm hiding in my car because I'm a mom, so I've been hiding from my kids for over an hour. But <laughs> oh, you had to go <laughs> to your car to hide from your kids. That's hilarious. I mean, look, it is what it is. If you have been, I have been stuck in the house with my kids for uh, several months at this point. I deserve to hide in the car. No, actually, a lot of people are hiding in the car. Um, I act, I personally like to go for drive by myself. That's why I think so. There's there's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> See, and I'm easy to please. I don't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> so, all right, where where will people be able to find Kelly's Club today? And is it just going to be a podcast? Is it going to be video? What is oh, so right now? Um, I believe it's going to be a podcast with some video. Um. But I'll be posting more information. I did make an Instagram for it. So Closet Conversations is the Instagram. Conversations with a K because why wouldn't I spell it with a K? Um, 
And then that's it. So you can follow me there, but I'll be announcing it on my regular page also, which is Kelly's Closet.net on Instagram or Kelly's Closet on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be announcing it in all of those places, believe me. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in closet conversations and want to see what we're talking about, you can definitely follow me there also on Instagram. Like I said, it's closet and conversations with a K. Well, thank you, Kelly. I think that's a great place to end it right there. I appreciate you taking the time to come out. Uh, I appreciate everyone that was with us in the, the live audience. Listen, everybody, go check out Kelly's website. She's bringing something new. She's bringing something different to the marketplace. I think everybody deserves representation. Everybody deserves to feel sexy. And everybody deserves to feel loved. So I will see you all soon. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.